David here with Fig Boot on Pens back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you three pens from Mont Blanc, which would be the three pens in their Glacier series. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of these three pens, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about them. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Applebaum for providing these very nice pens on loan for review. Uh, this series from Mont Blanc celebrates Mont Blanc's unique glaciers. Uh, that's the actual Mont Blanc, the mountain, not the pen company. Uh, there are actually four pens in this series. There is the Solitaire, the Dewey, the Le Grand, and finally the Classique. Now, as I mentioned up top, I have three of these pens to show you. Um, I don't have the Classique, but that's okay. I think the others will give you a good idea of what's going on with this collection, celebrating the multiple unique glaciers surrounding Mont Blanc. Um, on a side note, speaking of glaciers, this summer I had the opportunity to take a trip up to Alaska, where I was able to see several different glaciers. Uh, this one here is the Mendenhall Glacier near Juneau. Uh, we went out on a rafting trip down the Mendenhall River. Uh, only a couple of weeks after we were there, due to the erosion of an ice dam, uh, the river rose almost 15 feet from this point, causing severe damage and destroying dozens of homes. Uh, that home right there on the right probably isn't there any longer, which is pretty sad. In Glacier Bay, we saw other stunningly beautiful glaciers. The bay was incredibly calm and tranquil. Uh, and then you have this enormous wall of ice slowly crumbling its way into the bay. Uh, Alaska is a beautiful part of the country, and if you ever have the chance to visit, I don't think you will be disappointed. Okay, back to some pens. Since I have three pens to go over, I think it'll work best if we take a look at them over here at camera two. The pens arrive in these boxes. Uh, the boxes are not especially unique. There's a little glacier theme here, um, but the box is rather unassuming. Uh, inside, well, this sleeve comes off, and then inside we have a couple of things. We have uh, a little service guide in here. Uh, there is no special booklet or instruction manual like there is on some Mont Blanc models. Uh, and then we have a nice sleeve, and inside the sleeve we have a pen. Let's go ahead and clear this other stuff out of here. This is the Solitaire. Let's just go ahead and start off with a little bit of comparison, uh, because then next up we have the Dewey, and then finally we have this one here, which is the Le Grand. Um, the Solitaire here is a metal pen, uh, and you know, let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here. There we go. Um, the Solitaire here is a metal pen, and the with the Dewey, it is a, a metal cap and a metal piston knob with the barrel being resin, and the Le Grand has a resin cap and barrel with some metal furnishings. Um, the Solitaire actually has a bit of heft to it. Um, let's quickly show some weights. Just so you can see how much each of these weigh. Come on, you can get the tear going. There you go. So for the Solitaire, you can see that it's almost 59 grams. Uh, and then for the Dewey, it is 33. And then for the Legrand, it is 30. Let's go ahead and take a look at these individually. Um, we'll start with the Solitaire. Uh, the cap and barrel are covered with a special engraving, which is covered by a translucent blue lacquer, which represents the geometrical refractions of ice crystals. Uh, it's a real interesting look. You really get some bling here when this light refracts off of these facets in different ways. Uh, you have the traditional snowflake here at the top of the cap. The serial number is right here on the clip band, which is a common place for Mont Blanc to place their serial numbers. Then we have a standard Mont Blanc clip. 
Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. No, no, you really can't see this under here. Underneath the clip, it does say made in Germany, and then it has metal, then a little circle afterward. Over the years, Mont Blanc has used a number of beneath the clip engravings. Um, on the cap band, it is stamped with Mont Blanc and Meisterstück. Uh, there is a small step down to the barrel, which tapers down slightly until you get to a piston knob. Um, as you can see here, this pen has a medium nib and the end of the piston knob is rounded. The cap twists off with one rotation and underneath we have a very nice 18 karat gold nib. Uh, it's about the size of a number five nib. Now, I love how Mont Blanc will create custom nib stampings for a number of their pens, uh, but this one had me a bit puzzled until I did some research. I really couldn't figure out what this image was supposed to be. Uh, you know, was it like a phoenix? I just, I just really couldn't tell what it is. Now, going back to the theme of this pen, which is glaciers, there are a number of glaciers surrounding Mont Blanc. Um, one of them is called Mer de Glace, which is French for Sea of Ice. Uh, back in 1892, an illustration by a gentleman by the name of Henry George Willock portrayed Mer de Glace as a dragon snaking its way down the side of the mountain. And after I saw that picture, let me see if I can kind of get them side by side, get it really up close. Um, and after I saw that picture, then I realized uh, what this nib stamping was, which was a duplicate of that particular picture. Um, now, I really, uh, while I really like Mont Blanc's unique nib stampings, um, I felt this one was a bit abstract. I shouldn't have needed to uh, find a reference picture to understand what was on the nib. Uh, then again, in relation to the Mont Blanc region, this might be a very famous picture that I was not aware of. Uh, and then here is a look at the traditional uh, high-fend plastic feed. The section begins with a very slight flare. Um, it is a rather slick metal. Uh, the section is a bit on the thick side, as you see. Uh, and for me, that helps cut down on the slickness a bit. Uh, I mean, and I'm able to maintain an adequate grip without it sliding around too much. Um, there are some metal threads, which I don't find to be sharp. And then a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, the cap does post. Um, and it does post securely. And even though this cap is rather hefty, with it posting so deep, I find the weight to rest more on my hands rather than serving to back weight the pen. So I find this pen to be very, fairly well balanced, even when posted. Um, this is a piston filler. Uh, this metal piston knob is a bit slick as well. And with it being tapered, um, I really need to like pay attention in order to maintain a solid grip on it when inking up the pen. When you're cleaning this pen and your hands might be wet, then maintaining a grip can be a challenge. Uh, on pens like these, I have one of those little like grip cloths I use, which helps out a lot. Okay, let's take a quick look at the other two models, which have a number of similarities. This one here is called the Dewey. Uh, it is the thinnest of the model and has the metal faceted cap, uh, this time in the pure metal without the blue lacquer uh, of the solitaire model. Uh, then there is a resin barrel in this nice blue. The nib is considerably smaller. Uh, it's about a number four and it is an 18 karat gold nib and has the same Glacier Dragon imprint. The section is thinner, uh, but it is resin, and I don't find it to be slick at all. While the cap does post deeply, um, and you know, without the metal body to balance out the overall weight, I find the metal cap to really back weight this pen, so I prefer to use this particular model unposted. Uh, and then this model is a cartridge converter. And then finally, we have the Legrand. Um, this one has the blue Gracier re resin cap and barrel. Um, this model has the larger nib, the size of the Solitaire, uh, but this one is 14 karat gold as opposed to 18 karat. Um, it is a piston filler, 
And similar to a Montblanc 146 or 149, it has the ink window here. Uh, with the blue resin, it's a bit more noticeable than on the traditional black resin of other Montblanc pens. Okay, now in regard to price, let's get these pens out here. In regard to price, the Solitaire is approximately $1,800. Uh, the Dewey is around $930, and the Le Grand Blue is around $900. Uh, Montblancs are luxury pens. Um, of these three, I'd have to say that the Solitaire is my favorite, not just because it's the twice as expensive as the others, but the overall look and heft really play into my personal preferences. It just feels like an incredibly solid pen, um, and I love the blue faceted look. Um, I like the Le Grand as well, I will say that the Dewey is my least favorite of the bunch. Um, I like the looks of the faceted cap, but it's a bit thin for my taste. And the heavier metal cap paired with the resin barrel kind of give the feeling kind of an imbalanced feel, even when capped. Um, each of these models, as well as the white I showed up top, can be found on the Applebaum website. I will put a link to where you can see them in the notes below. Okay, let's show some size comparisons and then provide a writing sample with this Solitaire. You know what, let me go ahead and leave these up here. I'll leave all of them up here and we'll see if we can fit everything in here. There, everything fits. So in regard to some other Mont Blancs, here it is with a 149 and then here it is with a 146. And here it is with a Star Walker in the Ultra Black. In regard to some non Mont Blanc pens, here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens and a Pelican M1000. And finally, here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. Okay, here we go with the writing sample for the Mont Blanc. We'll say this is the Glacier Solitaire. And this is a medium 18 karat gold nib. And the ink I'm using, I thought it would be appropriate to use a Mont Blanc Blue. And one of my favorite Mont Blanc Blues is Mont Blanc BMW Blue. This is what the ink looks like, uh, that it's supposed to match the color of BMW's blue. Uh, that I don't know if this ink was available at any stores, uh, but it was available through uh, the official uh, BMW website. So if you'd like this ink, then you can check it out there. This is what it looks like in comparison to Leonardo blue, which is a little bit more saturated. Uh, and then here it is with Lamy's blue. This is what the bottle looks like. I don't think it comes in, comes in the larger bottles. It just came in this uh, smaller one, but it is a nice ink. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Just squeezing it in there. Uh, Mont Blanc nibs are outstanding. Um, for these, they're standard nibs. Uh, they are very soft. Um, I wouldn't necessarily categorize them as glassy smooth. And you're, you can get a little bit of variation out of there, but you're not going to get tons. Um, the ink flow is very generous. And in regard to reverse writing... It's a little bit sharp, but it gets the job done. And then in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up very well. 
So here we have three of the four pens in the Glacier series. There was the Dewey, the Solitaire, and the Legrand. Uh, if you are in the market for a Mont Blanc, uh, like I mentioned, they are luxury pens, but they do feel like luxury pens and that they do a very good job uh, and the nibs are outstanding as well. So thanks again. Go out to Applebon for providing these pens for review. I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check these pens out as well as the white model that I didn't include here uh, on their website. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.